everybody. As you can see, I'm still in my sprinting garb. And that's because before I really finish getting ready for the day, I'm going to put in a batch of my homemade bone broth. I started making homemade bone broth for a few reasons. One of those is the health benefits from the homemade versus the store-bought. So in the homemade bone broth, you're gonna get a lot more of the collagen and gelatin. Oh, that's my cat, you guys. Pixel, no, she's gonna knock the tripod over. <laughs> okay, she's gonna walk away, I hope. Whenever I video, she thinks it's for her. Anyways, the collagen content is gonna be much higher, which is something that I'm looking for, for the, the skin, the nails, um, all of those benefits from collagen as well as the gelatin. If you're gonna use this bone broth as a base for other things, there's a higher gelatin content. There's also a lot more of the minerals and the calcium and things from the bones that you're gonna get. You can also control the quality of the bones that you choose. Now, I'm gonna be real with you guys. I love ribeye and I do eat several ribeyes a week, but I cannot afford to pay full price for ribeye. I do look for it on sale and then I have a chest freezer in my garage which I fill up with as much ribeye as it will hold when it goes on sale for around $6.99 a pound but that is just the ribeye from my regular grocery store and that's the bones I'm going to use today. Now uh, next month I will be visiting a grass-fed beef ranch and my some of my family members and I are going to share a half a cow. So I'm really looking forward to getting bones from that, uh, the, the grass-fed bones. You can also just purchase the grass-fed bones, but these bones I already have from the ribeyes that I already eat, and so I save them. You can see I've just put them in a bag here and I just freeze them. So every time I make a ribeye, I stick the bone in my bone bag and freeze it, and then when I'm out of bone broth, I pull that out and I make another batch. So when you buy bone broth at the store, most of the time you're not gonna get the same nutrients or the same consistency. My bone broth, I'm out right now or I'd show you. I put it in another video because it was my last jar and I wanted to show you. My bone broth, when it's done, it is thick like jello. Sometimes even when you turn the jar upside down, you it won't even fall to the won't even fall towards the lid. Or if it does, it falls like in a chunk. It doesn't, it's not liquid, so it's practically a solid. Um, there's also a good amount of fat in there. Now, I've heard some other people drain that fat off and use that fat in other ways. I did not even think to do that, so that's not what I do. I just let that fat stay there. When I reheat it, I, it just kind of mixes in and I drink it. So um, either way, guys, I'm sure it's great. Um, I will say that I do normally put salt in my bone broth. So the salt that I would normally use is my Redmond's Real Salt. I would use about a tablespoon in the batch. I'm going to forego that this time for two reasons. One, I want to let my cat Pixel, who just about destroyed this video a second ago, try some of this. And I don't want to have too much salt in there for my feline friend. And I figure I can just salt later, salt to taste later as needed. Another thing, another reason is I pulled out my, um, oh, that's my timer for my pecania, you guys. We're gonna clear that so it stops beeping, but okay. I think we got that timer problem fixed. My oven can sometimes be um, finicky, and I do have a double oven, so sometimes it's I've got two at the same time and it's tricky. So these are my Keto Chow Daily Minerals, and these taste so gross. <laughs> But there's so much good stuff in here. So there's chloride, magnesium, boron, copper, iodine, chromium, potassium, zinc, magnesium, selenium, and molybdenum. I don't even know what that is, but it's in here. And it also has um, some sodium as well. So the thing that I discovered with this is I do like getting the minerals, but I have not found a way to make it palatable. So when I put it in just plain water and try to drink it, I can barely put any in. And a dose is like about a tablespoon and I'm getting at such a small fraction of that because if I go any more, then it tastes really bad. So what I found is if I put this in with my bone broth, I can get about a third of that dose in the bone broth and it doesn't taste gross, it just makes the bone broth salty. So I figured, why not use this instead? 
in each bone broth as I drink it. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and switch to that. And then that way I don't overwhelm my cat with too much salt and I can get my daily minerals. All right, so the things that I'm gonna put in my bone broth are the steak bones that I showed you. And I'm gonna put in this uh, two tablespoons of this Bragg apple cider vinegar. And this is with the mother. So I started shaking it. I was gonna show you guys, you probably can't see now because I did start shaking it. This will settle out and you need to shake it fairly well to get it to mix. If you forget to do that, you're missing all the good stuff that's going to settle out. So you need to shake this quite a bit, okay? And I'm gonna take my bag of steak bones. This is not measured at all. I'm going to just put them into my Instant Pot. Get them all settled in there. Okay, I'm going to grab my measure. Now I don't have a clean tablespoon measure, but this is a half a tablespoon. So I'm gonna do four half tablespoons, which is two tablespoons. Yes, I'm a math teacher. <laughs> The reason for the vinegar is the acid in the vinegar actually helps to leach out or pull out more of the minerals and collagen from those bones. So that's why I add that in there. I do not add any vegetables, but again, when you make your own bone broth, you can control those. So if you do a few vegetables like onions or things like that within your diet, you can obviously add them in. You will know exactly what is going in to your bone broth, which is another reason I decided to make my own. Okay, I've already got some water here. Um, is this about four cups? It's not gonna be enough, but I just had it pre-done. So I'm gonna get some more. Okay, so when you're putting the water in the Instant Pot, you just don't wanna go to, you know, past the max fill line. Um, so I don't usually measure all the water out. I just fill it up with whatever bones are in there because that's gonna make a difference on how high that fill line is. Um, so I just fill it up to that max fill line. Okay, and in this case, that was probably a total of 10 cups of water that I was able to get in there, but it depends on the amount of bones. Now, why am I using my Instant Pot? Because it's faster. <laughs> so you can do this in a slow cooker or even on the stove. I personally don't feel comfortable leaving my stove with a fire, a flame on for you know, 24 hours while I'm sleeping, all of that stuff. A slow cooker is a great method if you don't have an Instant Pot. Um, I personally have not done that just because I do have an Instant Pot, um, but I've heard you can do it in a slow cooker for 24 hours and you still get that nice gelatinous consistency. In my Instant Pot, this is going to take about four hours. And I will tell you, this is a handy tip. The first time I did this, um, I put it for three hours and everything was good, but the bones were still kind of uh, hard. When you put it in for four hours, it definitely starts to soften those bones. So I just feel like I'm getting a little more out of them. But when you do the pressure release at the end of those four hours, I do notice an odor. I think it's because the bones are like literally breaking down. And so today when I release the pressure on this, I'm gonna do that outside just because it's kind of a weird odor. Now the broth doesn't have a weird odor. The broth itself does not have a weird odor and it tastes delicious and it definitely gets that gelatinous consistency. But um, just to avoid having my house smell that way, I'm going to take that outside. When I did three hours, I did not notice that odor. So that's up to you to decide your amount of time that you wanna do on that. Okay, so I'm gonna Go ahead and put the top on this Instant Pot. I will set it for the four hours. And then when that is done, okay, there we go. And my, my Instant Pot actually has a soup or broth um, button. And when I push it, it goes for four hours. So that's pretty much what I do and then that'll start up in a second. So when I am done, what I do, if I can find my, should have had this out and ready. 
Okay, well, I will find it. But I have a mesh strainer. So some people do um, like cheesecloth or whatever to strain their bone broth. I just bought a fine weave mesh strainer, um, which I'm going to use to strain this when it's done. And you can see that I have all of my uh, mason jars ready right here. I have 10 of them out and ready um, to pour that into once this is done. So when this is done, I'll show you all my jars of delicious bone broth. Hey everybody! As you can see, it has been four hours and a little bit more. I quick released the pressure on my Instant Pot and then I used my, I told you I would find it, <laughs> my fine mesh strainer to strain all of the bones and pieces out. Um, I strain that into a, like a big container that's glass that has like a pour spout. So I strain it into that. And then I pour it into my mason jars here. These are pint sized mason jars. I wanted to find the one for you. This one's pretty good. I don't know if you can see that because it's still warm, but the fat is starting to rise to the top. There's a good quarter inch of fat on the top of that one. They're not all the same on the fat content. It kind of depends on when it gets poured out of there. The earlier ones tend to have more fat on there um, that rises to the top, but they all taste delicious. The reason that the jars are not all the way full is I am going to freeze those and I don't want them to explode. So I don't like measure each one, but you can see they're about maybe two thirds to three fourths of the way full with broth, I will let them finish cooling uh, a little bit more. I will put them in the refrigerator first and then I will keep one or two in there and freeze the rest. I did get about nine jars of broth out of that batch and that will last me three weeks or so. I don't drink broth every single day. I take it to work with me two or three days a week and I drink it during my lunch time with a couple of hard boiled eggs. So that's how I use it. Every single product I use from the, from the Instant Pot to the strainer to the mason jars, all of that good stuff, the, 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 the minerals that I showed you earlier. I'm going to link those down in the description. Um, the salt as well because if you're not going to feed any to your cat or if you happen to know that salt is fine for cats and you want to put it in there, I'll put in the salt that I use. I, I use that salt all the time and it's great. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, please subscribe. It would really help me out. And I hope that you give homemade bone broth a try. I don't always do things the homemade way because I'm maybe a touch lazy, maybe a lot busy, but this is something that I really find value in. I'm going to go meet some wellness, one delicious batch of bone broth at a time.